Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Be a Blue Devil webinar. Um, we're so happy that you're taking the time this evening to uh, to join us. Um, my name is Josh Young. I, uh, I'm a senior recruitment officer here at Kings, and I'll be the host. And we have a lot of lovely people here from the, the athletics department here with us to tell you what it's like to be a varsity athlete at Kings. And we'll um, introduce everybody uh, here in a few minutes. I'm just going to uh, give us a minute here to make sure everybody is uh, has logged in. And while we wait, I do want to go over a few housekeeping items. So, um, you know, this this webinar is for you. So feel free to to ask questions. We highly encourage it. We want to uh, provide you with all the answers that you're that you're looking for. But what it's like to be a varsity blue devil? That's uh, that's why we're here today. Um, so if you have any questions, please put it in the Q and A function at the bottom. Um, we'll talk uh, about about 30 minutes. We'll do like a 30, 40 minute presentation. And afterwards, we'll open it up for uh, for questions at the end. So please put that in the Q&A function. If you have something that's more technical related, like if you can't hear somebody, for example, um, could you just please put that in the uh, in the chat and um, we'll uh, we'll deal with that as uh, as we go along. So I'm. Uh, I want to share my screen here and and get things get things on their way. So before we begin, I'd just like to do a land acknowledgement. So um, Kings, we're located in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, which you can see right there. Um, to it is Halifax is on the land of the uh, Mi'kmaq people, and uh, for the Mi'kmaq, this um, land that we're on is called Shpuktuk, which means Great Harbor, Halifax, for those who haven't been here, has a huge harbor. It's the, I think it's the second largest natural harbor in the world. So uh, if you, when you come to Halifax, it's um, the name for it in the, in the Mi'kmaq language is Shabuktuk. And everybody who lives in Shabuktuk or in uh, Mi'kma'ki, which is the the name of the area that Mi'kmaq people, um, that they, the name of their territory, which spans from um modern day Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and a little bit into Maine. Uh, everybody who lives in Mi'kma'ki is um, bounded by the Peace and Friendship Treaties that call for peaceful coexistence amongst everyone who lives on Mi'kma'ki. Um, Nova Scotia is also has a rich cultural history of African Nova Scotians, as well they've been in our province for well over 400 years. So um, we also have Acadians as well um, who live about a whose ancestral home would be an hour away in uh, around Wolfville and Grand Prix. So it's a very uh, multicultural and uh, uh, city and with lots of, lots of history in Halifax and in Nova Scotia. And so Kings is right here. This is our, our beautiful quad. Um, so you can see the, the gym where uh, you would be training, doing practices, that's over here in the corner. Um, right next to it here is a library where you'll be doing a lot of your studying. Um, the residences are here and here. Uh, back here is where a lot of the academics happen at King's. Um, if you're interested in the foundation year program, the foundation year program lectures happen in this building back here. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, over this building right here is where Meal Hall is. It's where the third floor is where the journalism school is. It's where the registrar's office is if you need to change your classes. Um, and then over here is the chapel and also where uh, President Bill lives as well. So we, we cram a lot into our beautiful quad right here. And um, King's itself, it is uh, known primarily for the foundation share program and for journalism. So uh, just quickly, the foundation share program, it's a special way of doing your first year of university. Um, you are with most of the first year students at King's are doing the foundation program, not, not all of them, but uh, the, most of them are. And what you're doing is you're going on a journey through time, reading texts that have changed the way we think about the world. You're essentially going and reading um, the history of ideas. You, you start in the ancient world and in September and you read your way down to the ancient world or sorry, to the, to the, to the 21st century. Um, by April, and you'll be reading um, philosophers, you'll be scientists, historians, economic uh, economists, 
um, you'll be reading about um, uh, colonialism, revolutions, and how all of these ideas and subjects came together to um, to push humanity forward. So that's the foundation year program. Um, our also our school of uh, journalism, writing, and publishing is a big pillar. Of what we offer at Kings as well. Uh, we offer a four year, very hands on degree where you can get a Bachelor of Journalism Honors degree and go on work in, in journalism, communications, marketing, wherever that, that may lead you. Um, you can also do a minor in journalism too if you're not interested in fully committing four years of journalism, but you're still interested in it. You do the minor, which um, if you're not familiar with university terminology, a major is about half of, of your degree. Um, so if you, did a, if you did a double major, you're going to be doing essentially those two programs for most of your degree, um, but a minor makes up a quarter. So if you're not sure what that terminology means, a major is a half a degree, a minor is a quarter. And we also have some upper years honors uh, programs as well. If you're interested in early modern Europe from like the 16th to the 18th century, if you're interested in the contemporary world from the 19th century onwards, or if you're interested in the history of science technology, that's what we offer academically at King's. But Kings, we're also partners with Dalhousie University. So here's our quad right here. Again, here's the gym. The rest of this picture here is Dalhousie University. And over at Dalhousie, we share a lot of um, academics, anything within the Bachelor of Arts, Science, or the Fountain School of Performing Arts that is available. All those programs are available to King students. You can earn degrees um, within those schools. Um, even though it takes place over at Dalhousie, you can still be a King student. It's, it's shared between our two, our two institutions. Um, so there's a wide breadth of, of, of academics that you can get both between Kings and Dalhousie, which, um, you know, in the ACAA, it's a lot of smaller, smaller schools. So definitely the, um, the breadth of courses you can get in, at Kings and Dalhousie is, is certainly, um, uh, in, in much larger compared to other schools in, uh, in, in, in the ACAA that we compete against. Um, we also share a lot of services between our two schools as well. Um, Neil will talk about this in a minute or in a few minutes, but you can use our gym at Kings. You can also use Dalhousie's Dalplex as well. Um, you also have access to Dalhousie's Writing Center. Um, you have access to both the Kings and Dalhousie Libraries. You have access to uh, the Black Student Advising Center at Dalhousie or the Equity Officer here at Kings, the accessibility teams at both schools. Um, you, you have access to the Health and Wellness Center at Dalhousie, which is essentially a uh, like a walk-in clinic. If you need to be checked up for anything medically, you can, you can walk to Dalhousie's uh, Medical Center and be looked at fairly quickly. So essentially the, the great, it's, it's the best of both worlds. You get to come, come to a small school at Kings where there's a thousand students. You're gonna see all your friends all the time over in the in the quad. It's like a small town, but you also have all the access to all the services and programs that would exist at a larger university like Dalhousie. And Dalhousie is one is one of the top research schools in Canada. So you truly get the best of both worlds. You get the small school experience with us and the the larger school experience over at Dalhousie University. All right, so now time to meet uh, meet our panelists. So, um, Neil, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, please take some time to introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Josh, and thanks for that thorough uh, introduction of uh, Kings and how it uh, interacts with Dalhousie. Uh, my name is Neil Hooper, and I'm Director of Athletics. I've been in this position for 33 years, which translated means a long time, but uh, it's certainly been a labor, labor of love and uh, I wouldn't be anywhere else. So I'm gonna pass it over to James and he'll introduce himself and tell you uh, what he does. Hi everyone, uh, my name is James Wise. I'm the varsity administrator. I've been in that role for actually just two and a half years in a full-time position. My role really works uh, with our athletes and coaches within the department to make sure that uh, we're, we're staying on track season to season. A little bit of work also in recruiting, fundraising, uh, operations heavily. Uh, kind of a jack of all trades within the department. Thanks, James. Uh, Jamie, are you on? I am. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jamie McGinnis, 
men's soccer coach at Kings. I've uh, been here for 12 years now, head coach for six years. We just won a title this past season, so we're all still pretty pumped about that. And uh, yeah, yeah, so happy to answer any questions anyone has on that level. Thanks, Danny. Uh, and Aiden. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Aiden. Uh, this will be my fourth year with the Badminton team as a player. But starting this season, I reprised a head coach role. So now I'm more into uh, kind of wear two hats, both both on the court as a player and uh, and and in the chair as as, as head coach. Great, thank you, Aiden. Uh, and now we'll go to our student panel, and we'll start with Ariana. Um, hi, my name's Ariana. Um, this is my first year at Kings, and I'm doing the foundation year along with like a science um, degree at Dow, and I'm on the soccer team. Thanks. Max, over to you. Uh, <clears throat> hi, uh, my name is Max Osleno. I'm in my second year of Bachelor of Arts. Sorry, just uh, the website's a little outdated for us rugby uh, players, but yeah, I'm on the rugby team uh, in my second year, and yeah, that's, that's mostly it for me. Okay, Luke? Hi, uh, I'm Luke. Not a great picture of me there on the slideshow. Thanks, James, if you ever put that together. But uh, I'm on the soccer team. Jamie's my coach. <laughs> Jamie's my coach. We just This is the banner right here. We won this year, so we're excited for another good season. Um, I'm doing a Bachelor of Science, taking most of my classes at Dalhousie, but I have a couple uh, courses at King's that I'm really enjoying. Uh, yeah, and that's me. Great. Thanks, Luke. Uh, Elena, are you on? Yeah, hi, my name's Elena. I'm a third year on the women's volleyball team and I'm in the Bachelors of Journalism Honors Program and I'm also minoring in English. So I'm very back and forth between Dal and Kings. Great, thank, thank you, Elena. Uh, we're gonna hear uh, a little later from our student athletes as well. And uh, um, But I'm gonna take you through a little bit of the Blue Devils history. We chose to uh, uh, use this. I remember a few years ago. It's uh, we do this every everywhere every uh, year when we do our student athlete night. That's just a picture of everybody in that particular year. year. So very proud of the fact that we're able to do that. Um, I will take you briefly through the history of Kings. There, uh, Kings was founded in 1789, so that's a long time ago. We don't have a lot of records of back then, but. Mostly around the turn of the century, there were there were a lot of uh, teams uh, and uh, uh, people participating in sport. The formal part of sport started in 1967 when the original founding members, which was King's uh, Agricultural College and then Teachers College, uh, were uh, and uh, University College of Cape Breton formed a, what was called the Nova Scotia Small College Association and, and uh, played in, in Leeds. Um, in 1978-79, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Kings and the same teams that were involved in the 1967 group formally joined the Canadian Collegiate Athletic Association uh, in, in that year. And, uh, in 1993, uh, the current uh, association that we have, the ACAA, was 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 formed. And um, just uh, I will tell you a little bit about the ACAA and the CCAA in a, in in a minute. But uh, want to give you another little tidbit of history too. Is that so? In 1978-79, uh, there was an athletic director here named Bev Greenlaw, who's now a Hall of Famer, famous basketball coach as well. And you're probably wondering where the name Blue Devils came from. A lot of people thought it was the Duke Blue Devils, and uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, they wouldn't let us take their name anyway. But um, uh, Bev Greenlaw was from a border town called Callis, Maine. And e every year he played against a team they couldn't beat called the Callis Blue Devils. So that's where the Blue Devils get their name. So. Anyway, I, uh, I just thought I'd give you a bit of that. Let's move on to what we do here today. So the teams we have currently are men's and women's soccer, men's and women's rugby, men's and women's basketball, women's volleyball, and badminton. So that's, that's eight teams. And uh, 
we uh, we uh, we're very proud of what we do, and certainly we'll hear from some other people that are as well. But um, anyway, I'm going to move quickly to facilities. Josh told you a little bit about the King's Gym. This is some inside views of that, and um, so the nice thing about King's is we have our own gym, we have our own cardio room, and our own weight room. Um, these are smaller facilities, but they serve great purpose. And if you're living in residence or you're you're in the city, uh, you can come in and easily get a chance to work out and use the machine you want or the weights you want. It's an old school style gym uh, weight room with uh, uh, mostly free weights in. Um, the the beauty of this is when uh, when you become a uh, King student, you also uh, get a Dalplex membership, and they have a 30, brand new $30 million facility and uh, with endless supplies of equipment. So we we have, uh, uh, have thought of it as almost the best fitness deal in the country because you have the benefit of two schools uh, and uh, there's, there's everything from uh, uh, the artificial turf field, which, uh, uh, which our soccer teams practice and play on and our rugby teams practice on from time to time. And... Um, so we're very proud of the uh, of the setup we have. Um, so I'll move on now to the ACAA and the CCAA. So the league we play in currently uh, is called the Atlantic Collegiate Athletic Association, and it features schools from Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and uh, New Brunswick. And it is the only conference in the uh, in the in the in the country that encompasses three provinces and. That makes it a nice, nice exchange to be able to go to other provinces uh, uh, within your experience, and uh, and students enjoy that. Uh, and uh, so when you uh, when you're involved in the Atlantic Collegiate Athletic Association play, each league in the sports I've mentioned would then declare a champion, and the champion uh, gets to go to the Canadian Collegiate Athletic Association. Uh, championships, and that can be anywhere to be hosted in the Maritimes to uh, any of the other conferences which are in Ontario, Quebec, uh, and a newly, newly, newly found conference in Manitoba, uh, Alberta, and British Columbia. There are a couple of teams from Saskatchewan that play with the Alberta group, but this is an idea of uh, the uh, uh, how it works out to, to, to the uh, National organization. We're very proud of our association. The original found a founder uh, of of modern play and national championships. Our Hall of Famer Bev Greenlaw was at that very first meeting where the Atlantic Group uh, joined the uh, uh, Canadian Collegiate Athletic Association. So I've rambled on enough. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do. Um, uh, you'll see in the screen it says life as a blue devil and uh, uh, we've got our, our, our uh, student athletes here who can give you a better idea. So we're going to we're going to start off with uh, with Elena from women's volleyball and she can tell you what it's like to be a, a women's volleyball player. at Neil, do you just want me to talk like a little bit like day by day type thing? That yeah, work. you can. You just uh, just tell us briefly what uh, you know what what it's like, how your experience has been, and I think you know anything you think that these uh, uh, anybody that's on on would like to know. Okay, so for the women's volleyball team right now, we're practicing five days a week for the most part, um, and then since we're really close to our league playoffs, we have three workouts a week on top of that. So it's pretty busy, but, um, and with classes also, but usually like, I know my coach is really good with scheduling kind of around everybody's class time. I mean, if you can't make it to practice, um, every single time, it's not a big deal, but yeah, so it's really intense. Um, have to time manage really well, but yeah, volleyball is a long season. So you kind of have to just make sure you're taking care of yourself from like, right from the start of October when we start playing and up until I guess now, cause we're a week away from our league playoffs. But yeah, that's kind of, I guess, a little bit of what it looks like. Great, that's great. Now, Lane is very modest because her team is in first place. Uh, and uh, this is their last week uh, weekend of regular season play and the championships are in 
St. John, New Brunswick, with a uh, trip to Red Deer, Alberta on the line. So anyway, uh, and Elena, as a Westerner, uh, is uh, pretty excited about the prospects of that, I know. So uh, anyway, we're going to turn it over to Luke Kataska now from Men's Soccer. Um, all right. Here, one second. Whoops. All righty. I have moved into my room. Um, yeah, so we just won this year. We won a, an ACAA championship, which is pretty exciting. So we're, we're uh, super stoked about that. Um, our season runs kind of from the end of August, early September until depending on uh, how well we do into November, um, in mid November, that's when nationals kind of takes place. Uh, in season is pretty intense. We're usually training kind of every day of the week, maybe one day off. And then we have games on the weekends. So sometimes that'll look like games, um, here in Halifax, we'll host, uh, teams from abroad or we'll go on a road trip to, uh, New Brunswick or PEI. So that's what it looks like in season. Uh, we have a great group of great group of guys. So it's a, a lot of fun. Um, definitely a highlight of my university experience so far and a big reason that I'm here. And then out of season, um, it's definitely a little bit more relaxed. So for the second semester, the winter semester, we still uh, train as a team, maybe once or twice a week. And, and then all the soccer players go off usually and, uh, play for their respective clubs. Um, but we still get to practice together uh, a couple times a week. So that's nice that we're still, uh, kind of keeping that going. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about soccer. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the main reasons I'm here. I'm really loving it. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, just staying active. It's a great group of guys. And then it's a great, um, group of athletes more in general, just at Kings. So, um, nothing but good things to say. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luke. And, uh, Luke's modest too. He was uh, chosen as a, an all-star at the national championship and had a great season I believe you were all conference as well too uh, uh, for your team this year. So congratulations both personally and uh, to the team. We're very proud of you. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Ariana to come on again and talk about uh, her experience as a member of the women's soccer team. Yeah. Um, so my experience is really similar to Luke's, I guess. Um, we also got the chance to go to nationals this year, which was great. We didn't actually win like the league here, but just the way it kind of played out this year with PEI being hosts, um, the final two teams got the ball. Um, but anyways, we did really well at nationals. We were really happy with how it went. It was a great experience being a first year. Um, like Luke said, um, it's pretty like intense during the soccer season. It goes, we have training camp end of August. And then from then until the season ends, we have training five days a week, it's very early. So if you're not a morning person um, and then a game a weekend and then until pretty much playoffs. And then off season, we typically do like we'll play futsal together on weekends. And then we just try and like go to the gym as much as we can or go on runs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's been great. The team is really, really, it's a great group of girls. They're all extremely nice and I felt really welcome to my first year. Like they made me feel like a part of the team, which was great. And the coaches are great. Um, yeah, it was, it's, it's really fun to play on the team. It's probably been my favorite thing um, about university so far. So, yeah. Thank you, Ariane. And we're certainly very happy to have you here and a player, a player of your caliber as well. So thank you for that. Um, last but not least, uh, the big guy, Max, will have you talk about men's rugby for a bit. Uh, yeah, so so men's rugby. Uh, I'll say this now: we we're we are the only sports team for Kings that isn't in the ACAA. We are technically a club team, so we only play Nova Scotia teams until a uh, until like the final, the maritime final, where we'll play a team from New Brunswick. Um, and yeah, so that also means that we're allowed to have Dal SMU students. So if there's anyone you know that wants to play, but they go to Dal or SMU, they're welcome to come play. You know, it's free. But yeah, we. Uh, we year round, we're a little similar to soccer where we have our season, we practice. And then after that, guys are trusted to do their own thing, you know, do their things in the meantime and then get together once uh, like once the uh, school year is ending, a couple of practices here, there a week and then trust for ourselves during the summer. 
But during during the during the season, we usually just have about three practices a week. Of course, rugby is pretty tough on your bodies. It's uh, <laughs> it's a pretty physical sport. But yeah, so we usually take it easy. Sometimes we'll have uh, sometimes we will have maybe five practices a week. Like you know, throw an extra one or two there if we got to prepare for a game or prepare for playoffs. Um, and yeah, like Neil said, sometimes we'll uh, practice on the Dow turf and play on the Dow turf, but. Our field is mostly, it's just 10 minutes away from campus, so it's not bad, but it's a little closer to Smuse campus. So, but yeah, we, um, and yeah, like it was very welcoming. I know that in my first year, I was welcomed with open arms. And then in my second year, I was welcoming people back. And, you know, a, a lot of uh, new people were welcomed with open arms. And I'm sure it'll go on like that. But it was really fun in my first year. Yeah, I fit right in. Uh, I ended up playing every minute of every game. And that was, uh, that definitely felt worth it because we ended up winning the uh, Nova Scotia final. And then since we won that, like I mentioned, we played the top team from uh, New Brunswick. And then we ended up playing in the Maritime Final, which we also won. So we took home two trophies last year. And then this year, we did get back to the Nova Scotia Final. Fortunately, we didn't win it. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's yeah, like, like a lot of people have been saying, it's one one of the best parts of university. I'm having a lot of fun with it. We, uh, a lot of the guys get together still in the off season or during the season, stuff like that. Our season is the, the uh, beginning of the year. So it's uh, runs with the soccer season and then, Season will yeah start September and then run into November. That's when playoffs start and everything. And yeah, it's just a uh, like everyone else says, it's it's a real nice time. So personally, I can't complain. Max, Max also uh, you can you can also uh, see him involved in the broadcast for uh, uh, basketball and volleyball games uh, in the King's Gym. So whenever there's a, there's a a game there, you usually see him see him involved. So thank you, Max. Appreciate it. Thanks for your your contributions to uh, to, to uh, the uh, rugby program. I'm going to switch gears here. Uh, uh, just talk a little bit about how important it is, uh, and our philosophy here at King's is academic first. Uh, we have a lot of fun, and uh, certainly uh, uh, sports and activities like this give you balance. But our, our number one uh, our mission is to make sure. You uh, do well in school, and that you uh, move on to the next phase of your life. And uh, you know the goal is that everybody will graduate and uh, go on to a, a great part of our life. Having sport in, uh, as part of your uh, uh, as part of what you do, uh, you know we we feel that's a privilege, and uh, we treat it as such. And we do expect uh, our student athletes to uh, and coaches to represent. Uh, the school uh, with professionalism, and we also expect students to make sure that uh, they keep their grades up. And uh, uh, James will talk to you uh, later on in the webinar about the, all the, su the supports that we have for students, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let him talk about this in a bit. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to switch uh, to the next part of the, the webinar, and I'm going to ask. Uh, uh, first of all, Jamie, to talk a bit about uh, it's called camaraderie and family atmosphere, but to also maybe bring us up to speed on uh, something that's very important to, to him and to his student athletes, his team culture. Yeah, so I bet everybody on the call, like you've, you, you know, you've obviously all experienced, uh, you know, high school sports and essentially university. It's just that it's that on steroids. It's the next step. And all of you have been on a team where you can just feel whether the culture is good or the culture's off. And um, when you're on those teams where the culture's good, it, you, you just know what kind of contributing factor that has to whether, you, you know, uh, you can you can win with that group and how how deep you can go into the season and but also how um, enjoyable of an experience it is for everyone so at Kings what I love about coaching here is that it is though our teams are doing a lot of winning this year across the board um, that we are not a win at all cost um, organization we're not a win at all cost department there's we have a strict no jerk policy on our team just as simple as that you're you could be a the most talented player and come in, and if you are poison to the team, then um, you know that you you don't play and you're not going to survive on the team. You to be on the team, you need to contribute to a positive team culture, 
as a foundation to even get looked at. So uh, we feel that we see that with a lot of the teams at Kings. Uh, for us, it's an absolute non-negotiable, and I think it's a it's a it's a key part of our success. And what we're seeing is that um, the guys are really buying into that. And it's a really special thing for me. Both I've gone through this as a student athlete playing high school, going on playing university. And I coach to give back because of what sport did for me as a, you know, as a young person. And, and that helped, helped me develop into, a, into a, an adult um, is seeing 24 very different people from different backgrounds um, that are coming together to work product productively in a team environment to achieve something that you can't do by yourself. And that is w when you do it right. Um, it, it goes a long way. And I think Kings is really special when it comes to that. And I think you can hear that when you uh, hear all the athletes talk about their experience at Kings so far. So that's something that you can expect if you do come here. Thanks very much, Danny. It's so so important you see it and 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 the positivity that their program is uh, and and Jamie said it right it uh, it permeates our 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 teams and we're very proud of that. Um, uh, Aiden, why don't you tell us a little bit? Aiden, Aiden's going to come to you, come to you from a very they've had a lot of success, but Aiden, uh, maybe you could talk about uh, you know what's behind the success and 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 the you know the, the how, that cohesive group that you have in that. Absolutely. Um, like Neil said, we have been fortunate enough to have quite, quite, quite a, quite a long list of accomplishments and success for over the duration of the program. Um, it's kind of a multifaceted answer, I guess you could say, because from the outset, badminton is, for the most part, an individual sport. You play singles, you play doubles. Not very often do you find yourself on. A, a traveling team of 8, 10, 12 people under 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 one name, under one band, or under one school. Um, for those of you who may not be uh, well-versed, Bampton in Canada, let alone Bampton in the Atlantic provinces, it is as tight-knit of a community as it gets. Um, everybody knows everybody. everybody. Everybody is looking for good competition. Everybody is out to have a good time. Um, we've been fortunate to to kind of land ourselves as the place to continue playing post-secondary, particularly in the Atlantic provinces. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what what contributes to our to our success above and beyond just landing our or cementing ourselves as the place to continue playing, is the level of inclusivity that we can that we have to offer we've got fortunately this year we've got a huge spec like a a, a a a wide array of of talent on the team we've got players who come off of national championships and canada games medals to players that just came out of high school badminton looking to to continue having a good time um but at the end of the day, I think it comes down to the fact that even though badminton, from the outset, is an individual sport, we can all come together under under one name, under under for 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 one purpose, and the fact that we have this depth of talent to call upon to to bring all of our players up collectively, I think that's that's really the main contributing factor to our success. Thank you very much, Aiden. Uh, and certainly, uh, um, Modest didn't go into a lot of details about their results, but they just won their sixth straight um, ACAA badminton title in last year. Six season. consecutive. Uh, six, yeah, six consecutive. Uh, so uh, anyway, so thank you for Jamie and Aiden for uh, for your, uh, uh, your your idea of what we call team culture, and and I think that's uh, that's really really important in, in in the grand scheme of things. Uh, we'll move quickly into accomplishments. Um, we've, we are in the middle of a very good year, but certainly uh, Aiden talked a little bit uh, a little bit about the, uh, uh, the success that they've had in multiple medal winners, 
uh, and, and again at the ACAA's uh, uh, one another championship banner. Um, uh, this year has been uh, has been a good one so far. Uh, uh, men's soccer league and league champions, as we know. Women's soccer, they were a runner up in the Atlantics and then went to nationals. Both teams performed extremely well against the best teams in the country, and uh, um, we we talked again about uh, uh, women's volleyball who uh, who are in first place and are nationally ranked. Uh, we've had a number of teams that uh, have been nationally ranked this year, and uh, we're very very proud of uh, of that. So uh, lots of accomplishments, uh, many accomplishments to come. Uh, I, I did uh, forget to mention too, women's basketball also having a uh, a fantastic season, uh, sitting I believe in third place at this point in a very tight league, uh, and uh, it uh, they're hoping for good things at the upcoming uh, basketball championships as well. It's, uh, um, men's basketball has been a bit of a, a rebuilding year, so we'll uh, uh, they're hoping for uh, a strong finish and. Uh, and, and better things to come uh, next year. Um, so there are a few things that uh, we can switch now to games, travel, and practices. And we're going to ask our friend James, uh, varsity administrator, uh, if he would take us through uh, the uh, a, a bit of uh, uh, know-how on the uh, games, travel, travel, and practice. So we had a, a number of athletes that were on that are on the call, um, but just for a little bit about what their kind of weeks look like for their seasons. If you're a soccer player, again, you play in the months of September and October, and you're probably playing two games a week, uh, often back to back on weekends, so Saturday and a Sunday, or maybe a midweek game against a closer rival like a MSVU that's in the city or a Dal AC that's an hour away, and then another road game or another game against a, a further away opponent on the weekend. Uh, they play a full twelve game season. only once a week, as Max uh, implied. Rugby is a very physical game, and playing back-to-back -back on a weekend uh, is just shy of cruel and unusual punishment. So we we break that down to just be one weekend uh, or one game per weekend to manage the loads there. Basketball and volleyball each play, if I'm not mistaken, or basketball plays an 18-game season, so you play everyone three times. We have uh, seven teams in that conference, including ourselves, and that takes place between November and February. A lot of those will be... Uh, two games on a weekend, sometimes only one, and again, the occasional midweek game against a close opponent. And volleyball, I believe, plays a 21-game season, uh, subdivided based on group play. Again, sept or, uh, November through uh, through February, um, but lots of play coming on the weekend. And then badminton plays about once a month in the tournaments around the Maritimes, those uh, beginning as early as November, and then again, January and February, rounding out towards playoffs. Playoffs are the culmination for all of our um, all of our varsity programs. It's our goal every year to enter playoffs with a solid shot of bringing home a championship. We're very proud of the student athletes we have on this call, particularly because of our fall sport athletes. Everyone advanced to that championship game, and uh, knock on wood for Elena and the volleyball program. That's exactly where they're going to be in about two weeks. Um, the travel, as Neil implied, uh, our conference covers teams that are in. Nova Scotia, PEI, and New Brunswick. One of the real benefits of being an athlete in the ACAA, if you come to Kings and are not from the Maritimes, is you get to see the Maritimes. Uh, we travel to Moncton, St. John, Fredericton. You get to drive over Confederation Bridge to see uh, PEI when we play Holland College. Uh, if you're on men's rugby, you'll take the occasional trip up to Cape Breton Island, which is in northern Nova Scotia. These are what we, you know, they're long road trips, but you're you're with your teammates and you're with your friends. If you're a varsity athlete, um, most of our varsity athletes, I think, would describe their teams as their primary social circles. You're spending a lot of time with these people during the season um, at practices and at social events. So the travel is just another really great part of the experience uh, that really has nothing to do with the games or competition itself. Uh, and then the practices, as we've alluded to, our teams right now are not certainly win at all costs, but winning is a uh, certainly a priority. Majority of our student athletes list the uh, primary reason for competing in athletics at Kings is to be in a competitive program. And that's something that we certainly strive for year in and year out to advance the, um, uh, the visibility of our campus and our university to be in those top 15 rankings for Canada and compete at the highest level. 
So uh, practices are, are a primary uh, time consumer for student athletes. As Elena mentioned, time management is a, is a very important skill that our student athletes uh, have to develop. And I think it makes them not only better student athletes, but when they finally emerge from university, they're better prepared for the workforce because they've essentially had to manage their academics plus sport, which is the equivalent of a part-time job. And in many of their cases, they're working on the side, whether it's on campus or somewhere else. So it's a great life prep, I should say, um, while you're in university in a very uh, recreational way that uh, can really also benefit your resume. Neil, that's about all I had on, uh, yeah, on travel. Yeah, that's great. Um, so what we're going to appreciate that, James. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do, uh, we have some more things to cover, but uh, I think it's important now we'll stop and uh, we'd like to open it up to questions because I I wouldn't want you to leave here not being able to answer questions. So uh, we have a few things to cover, Josh. I think I can I can cover these in a short period of time. So let's open the floor for questions that, that people might have for some things uh, like that. Yeah, Neil, just two two more things. Can you touch quickly on the uh, the athletic scholarship here? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, oh, some... So we there's two types of uh, of uh, athletic scholarships here. And uh, the first of is a, is a more general uh, scholarship, which is called an athletic award. And these are based on ability um, that uh, in coming in, you have to have a minimum of a 65 average to receive these, but these are anywhere between uh, 1,000 and typically 3,000. And these are decided by coaches and in combination with myself and the registrar's office we offer students athletic awards. So these are something, if you're being recruited by a coach uh, or if you're interested in them, please contact us and let us know if you are. Um, and then you see by the slide here, we were very fortunate to have a former student athlete's parents um, uh, donate a lot of money uh, to allow us to uh, have uh, the Deborah Dean Little and Robert Little Academic Scholarships for Varsity Athletes. And these are designated for uh, people who are in the foundation year program and its various disciplines, so the ones that Josh told you about. Uh, and uh, the base award, or the award is, and we award 14 of these every year. They're four-year, $5,000 a year scholarships uh, uh, for a $20,000 uh, scholarship over four years. There is a qualifying component. You must have an 80% average or better to receive one of these awards. And the process is typically it, uh, uh, you can contact the school. Uh, there's also um, coaches will recommend uh, students. And then we again consult again with the registrar's office. Uh, and offer these. Um, there is also an academic component to this where you have to, uh, in each year, in your first year, you have to have a 3.3 uh, average and in subsequent years, second, third, and fourth, maintain a 3.7. So uh, they're, they're, that's why the title uh, academic uh, athletic scholarship. So they're uh, they're they're very prestigious awards, and there's a lot of students that receive them, and uh, so that's uh, one of the major things that uh, that we do. Neil, can right, I thank you, Neil. interject for a quick second? Yeah, yeah, go for it, Ian. Ah, uh, fortunately, I I I am the recipient of one of these Deborah Dean and Robert Little scholarships. Um, I should add that for those of you considering the foundation year program and are eligible to, to be in the running for this award, Deborah and Bob are wonderful. There's an associated kind of reception to it. They are absolutely wonderful. Thanks, Aiden. Yeah, thank you so much, Aiden. Um, uh, yeah, I haven't had the chance to meet them, but they, they sound like wonderful people for sure. So before we get to questions, um, I just want to quickly highlight some ways you can stay connected with Kings. Um, so we, on not this Saturday, but next Saturday is our uh, open house. Um, so you can come, you can um, 
learn about the foundation year program. You can take a tour of campus. You'll be you'll be fed lunch. Um, I uh, I'm a journalism grad, so I'll, I'll walk students through the journalism floor, and you can see the radio room and the video room. So all that's happening on February twenty fourth, and um, if you come, you can get your application fee waived as well. Um, March 1st is the deadline to apply and receive, be eligible for scholarships. Um, so I recommend if anyone here is in grade 12 who wants to apply and hasn't yet, to get your application in by March 1st. And we offer campus tours year round. So um, if you can't make it to the open house, for example, and you want a campus tour, um, we offer them year round. So just uh, um, you can go on, on our website to uh, future students. There'll be a, a, a link there to set up for a campus tour. We can we can show you around. All right. So now we are going to open it up to questions. So we have one question here. I think uh, so the question is, uh, what are you looking for in the application? Um, how much info about other sports played as well? So I think I'll answer the application part of this and I'll let um, maybe Neil take the, the second part of this question. Sure. Um, so what we're looking, yeah. So what we're looking for an application, um, it's mostly your grades. We're we're we're, we're based up. We're, we we want to know what, how strong of a student you are. Um, so we'll need your your transcript. Um, depending where you're from, it's it's it, it, it depends how you get your transcript into us. If you're from Nova Scotia, we'll get your power school number, and that's automatic. If you're from Ontario, we'll get your OUAC number, and again, that's automatic. Everything else, um. For us to get an official transcript from you, you need to uh, have your school send it to us. You yourself can't send it to us, and you'll send it to admissions at ukings.ca. Um, that is the main component. You certainly can put in references. If you're going to journalism, you can put in a journalism portfolio if you'd like, but those are optional. Uh, they can boost your application a little bit, but the, the core for the application is we're looking for um, students with strong with strong grade 12 grades. Um, so that's, of course, things will change in and out depending what program you're applying for and where you're applying from. But the gist of it um, is that um, we're looking for your transcript and, and strong, strong grades. Most of our uh, programs require a 75% minimum average. Journalism is the one that looks for an 80%. Um, those are minimum averages, so it doesn't guarantee that you'll be accepted with those averages. I recommend shooting a little bit higher, um, but that is that's what we're looking for in an application. And I'll put my email in here in the chat, so if you have any application questions, you can send those to me. And now, Neil, the second part of this question was how much info about other sports played as well. I, I'm assuming that questions, but what else? How else can you be involved in in sports at Kings if it's not playing for one of these? Of varsity sports we already mentioned that's how i interpret the question um could you could you talk about what else is out there for athletics as a, as a king student sure um the um first first thing there too is that um we have a uh, pretty well an open door policy any student can be involved in any society or organization uh, we have dance groups that use the uh, athletic athletic facilities but yeah, in our association with Dalhousie, if you're interested in a, a, a sport we offer uh, or even the ones we don't offer, there's a wide array of intramurals at uh, Dalhousie University that King students uh, can get involved in. Uh, in. In terms of anything uh, in, in our venue, uh, we're very open to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to anything that students would want to do and societies are welcome to. You mostly you see a lot of uh, a lot of dance, but there's also uh, several martial arts organizations that operate uh, in our gymnasium facilities. Uh, and uh, um, so, yeah, the most most of the activities, obviously, that happen in the prime time parts of the gym happen in the gym. But uh, student, anyone who's not a varsity student athlete, can certainly get involved in intramurals. In some of the clubs and societies that are that are there in gym. Uh, thanks, Neil, and um, um, and the uh, the person followed up saying they're wondering about um a varsity athlete application. How how would is how would somebody um interested in varsity athletics kind of go down that pathway of getting in contact with you guys and and getting involved in, in a team? 
Neil, Neil, Neil I can that, take this one if that's yeah, right. absolutely, sure, yeah. James. Yeah. Um, so I think it was uh, Fiona in the chat. So um, we encourage all of our athletes to reach out to the individual head coaches of the sport that you play, or the head, head coach of the sport that you play, well ahead of time. Um, that really can get you that initial one-on-one -on -one conversation with that coach, so you can uh, you know figure out what the program might look like and have that conversation of like where are you coming from and what level player you used to, and get that uh, the ball rolling in terms of. Um, the application and what it would look like for you coming in as a freshman. Uh, we also encourage any prospective athletes to check out the Kings website or our Instagram. There's a lot of information there, uh, even just like game footage. You can see how the team plays, those sorts of things. Um, they can give you more information on the front end, but contacting the head coaches first is the best place to start. And then uh, as the as the progress uh, or as the the process progresses. Um, we'll obviously be aware if you file an application and that sort of things. And then we can keep the coaches updated from there uh, to know like, yep, yeah, this is where you are in the application process, what still needs to be done when you're coming through all of those things. But reaching out to the head coaches because they are the ones that most closely work with each individual team is really the best place to start when uh, kind of inquiring about that athletic component. Thanks. I appreciate that, James. And uh, um, the, uh, the other thing, obviously, is that uh, we have a Do You Want to Be a Blue Devil uh, recruitment form. And uh, that will that has the power to, to get to a coach as well. So uh, even if you've already talked to the coach, uh, it's good to send one of those in because we get an opportunity to talk to the coaches uh, that have coached you in high school and find out a little bit more about you or maybe even get an opportunity uh, if you wanted to send some video clips in of, of, uh, of you playing to give coaches a better uh, better uh, uh, idea of your ability. So, appreciate that. Uh, Elenia, uh, go ahead. Um, also, that being said, I don't know what it's like for other teams, but for volleyball in particular, usually if, again, you check out on like the UKC Blue Devils Instagram or our own personal Instagram page, we're usually posting about open tryouts at the beginning of the season. So I'm assuming most teams do the same, but if for some reason you are a little too late with the application process, we do do like two or three days of open tryouts, or at least for volleyball in September, usually right at the beginning of school. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Elena. And uh, everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, feel free to ask away. Um, Elena, you brought this up earlier, so I want to follow up with a question. You were talking about managing your time. Um, do you go into more detail about how how that how how, how the how Excuse me, how is that done as a student athlete? How do you balance academics, athletics, personal life? What are some what, what are some of your tips? Um, so to be completely honest, um, because I'm in my third year, I've gotten a lot better in my first year. I wouldn't call myself an expert at time managing. Um, I was always busy in high school, but I feel like jumping into university, it is gonna be different. Um, I did foundation year two, so I was pretty busy doing that, but I feel like the best thing to kind of help you is for the most part, a lot of your teammates, or at least someone is going to be equally, like, like they're all going to be equally as busy as you. So kind of working together, like if you need to, I know, particularly with my team, if, you know, we have midterms or exams coming up, somebody will pull somebody and be like, hey, do you want to go book a study room with me while we have like some time in between practice or um, I've got a free opening here. Do you want to like do our workout quickly and then go work on this assignment together in the library. So I feel like using your teammates as like a resource to kind of help you stay on top of it is really helpful. Um, I'm the only one on my team in a journalism degree. So I've had to make a lot of friends in my classes too. So even though they're not necessarily Kings athletes, they're also really helpful to like keep me on track of things. So I do a lot of things with them also. But I think the main thing is to not put a lot of pressure on yourself coming in as a first year because it's we all have been there. We've all had to go through it. Um, so just like try the best you can. I write a planner out. <laughs> um, it helps me keep on top of things. But yeah, just you'll learn as you go for the most part. Uh, thank you, Elenia. And um, actually, I have a question now for Ariana that you completed your first or you're in your first year right now with uh as a blue devil, um, what is the tr tr transition been like athletically going from high school sports now to uh, university level? How, how, is, how has that been for, for you? 
Um, my high school, um, so I went to the grammar school. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the soccer season in my last two years, we actually didn't have a team. So I had no high school um, soccer, um, but I had been playing like provincial level and I did rec, the Rex program and I had like league soccer. So I was playing like fairly high level. So I kind of was like, I was expecting Kings to be, you know, roughly the same. Um, when I came in, it was a lot more, it, it was a lot of practicing. So it was a lot more like, um, I guess it, was, it was it was intense it was more intense than I had been expecting but which I liked um but the level was definitely um like pretty it was pretty high and then when we went to nationals that was like a whole other level um it was very intense but I think if you're like as long as it, it's it's like a good I, if you're playing high school like the West or in Ontario, stuff like that. Like it's a fairly like easy transition. A lot of the girls are older though, which is probably like the biggest thing. So some of the girls you play against are much bigger than you, stronger, have more playing experience, faster. So it's just stuff like that, but you get used to it. It's, yeah. Thank you. And um, Max, I'll, I'll go to you. You, uh, you came here from El from Alberta. Um, I, I so what was what was it like for you? I guess um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but socially and and, and making friends. How, how big was being a part of the Blue Devil in terms of getting yourself situated here in in Nova Scotia? And before you answer, I will say it's we're getting close to nine o'clock here. So if you have any questions, please just your chance to put them in the in the Q and A or, or or the chat so we can we can get to them. But but Max, um, you can take it from here. Yeah, um, I credit it a lot uh, to like mo moving here to Nova Scotia to to the Blue Devils. Uh, I've said it multiple times where, when people ask like, oh, have you felt homesick? Have you felt like how you like have you gotten around Nova Scotia? And I say I've uh, I've met a bunch of guys on the team who, like I said, welcomed me right away. It was immediately a social circle that I, I had at least I had at least some friends here. I, I knew that if I didn't make friends in my classes, I had had some of these guys to fall back on. And then talking about like the. Uh, the, like like learning about Nova Scotia, finding out. I uh, I actually had a, I had an amazing time going around Nova Scotia, and that was one of the highlights. Where I was like, oh my god, I got to see like like uh, like uh, I believe Neil mentioned Cape Breton Island, all the way up uh, Nova Scotia, and then going to like Wolfville to to Anaganish to Saint Effect stuff like that. It was uh it was it wasn't it wasn't too hard for me uh because I got that Blue Devils experience and I got to uh I got to travel and I had a team that even if even if I wasn't too close with them at least I'd see them weekly. It's something consistent for me where it's like university is a whole new thing where it's, uh, yeah. So, so the consistency with the team was definitely good and it was, uh, it was pretty helpful too. So it wasn't all that bad coming here from, uh, coming here from Alberta and then just moving in easy. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, James. Yeah. I just wanted to piggyback on Max's, uh, thread there i think one of the big assets and advantages to being a student athlete is when you come in you uh are immediately put in contact with a very reliable support system uh, again these are people that you're going to see every day uh depending on how long your season is for several months to up to almost the entire year if you're looking at the winter sports so you do have someone if you're homesick or having trouble whether it's academically or socially or whatever might be going on you had that immediate support system and folks looking out for you so we always consider that a major asset and i guess further on on mac on uh, Max's point, um, it's not just within teams, it's also within our department. And I think that that's something certainly in the last year that we've seen much more cross team camaraderie that we help or we hope is uh, helping, um, you know, produce a lot of our results is there's more support behind each of the teams from one another. And that's something that we very much pride ourselves on. So if you, you do come to join Kings, and you join a team, you're not just joining the family that is that team, but you're joining a broader family, which is all of our teams. And we really uh, do the best we can to support one another, whether you're a basketball player or a rugby player. Uh, there's so much common ground within this university. Josh, as you said, it is kind of like a small town, so you don't have to look far to find a peer. Yeah, Alenia, go, go for it. Um, yeah, and just to touch on that, like I guess a great example would be like for at least my team, I think there's only... I don't even know if there's anyone from Nova Scotia actually on the volleyball team currently. And so a lot of us 
in particular are from out west so we are not close to family at all so having kind of like or recognizing that you're not the only one that's far away from home is also really helpful and like James said with the department I think ever since I came here as an athlete um, I immediately noticed how like close-knit the community was of athletes I mean I see a majority of everyone in the gym whenever I'm there and like you're usually talking to them at the front desk or you're talking to them in the gym and it's it's really nice because they like become your friends just from seeing them so often but it's like we're, we are like kind of all in this together I guess um, both as athletes and just like a lot of us are far from home which I don't know it makes it easy to have a support system like that. Thank you. And um, I'm going to end things off with one final question, unless anyone else has anything else. And this will be to our two coaches here, Jamie and Aiden. I'll start with Jamie because he's a bit more experienced at the present moment in time. Um, what are you guys looking for from first year players when they when they come in in September or October and, and start playing? Like, what is what is your expectations? What are you what are you hoping they, they bring to the table? Honestly, uh, we have a pretty low bar um for for first year players coming in um it is a massive adjustment you're you're coming from all most of you guys would be living um you know on your home on your own for the first time um figuring out how to balance school and meals all of a sudden you're cooking for yourself or at least managing all these things it's it's a lot it's a huge adjustment um then if you're if you're entering uh fit then it's you know it's it's these are these are difficult uh, academic programs so we and like neil said it's 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 really school first so in a very healthy program the way we see it is first years come in and you're just an excellent teammate that is uh that's fundamental you come in and you you're in charge of the controllable so do you have a good attitude at training are you focused? Are you working hard? Are you an excellent teammate? Are you working towards improving your time management skills? So um, Elena mentioned that being in her third year, she didn't have those skills in her first year. We don't expect you as a first year student to come in and have it all figured out and be, you know, a 10 out of 10 with time management and, and all these things. It's, it's a process of, of coming in and we have standards from first year to second year to third year to fourth year around expectations and we try to communicate those expectations as the players go through university to whether they're ahead of it or behind it and and uh back to kind of james point is if you are in this environment as a first year and you're learning as you go you are you know 10 times more employable coming out of university having um you know having balanced these things i'm in the business world and it's one of the first things we look for on a resume student athlete. That means that you have, you can work in a team environment that you're, you have these time management skills and a whole other laundry list of things. So um, not looking at this time management piece is, is a, is a bad thing. This is just as, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a coach. So I'm going to say it's just as important as the university career, but that's, I'm a little biased, but uh, uh, yes, that's a long answer for a short question. Absolutely. I'm going to end up echoing a whole bunch of Jamie's sentiments. Like the biggest thing for me looking at prospective athletes and the team looking to bring in prospective athletes comes down to attitude, especially first, like, especially coming in as a first year attitude is the biggest, is, is, is the biggest thing. Um, I guess to that to that point um we had a first year come in this year she's a disc student played a very 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 small amount of badminton in high school and that was that was her badminton experience hosted an open tryout she came out jumped right on the team absolutely amazing attitude and that is something that i will pick and that is something that the team will pick 11 times out of 10 over as jamie said if you if you find yourself as a bit of a poison to the team you're not gonna you're not necessarily going to last if you've if you don't contribute to that positive team atmosphere and positive team culture your spot on the team kind of dwindles a little bit um but i guess to continue that point about our first year 
very, very minimal badminton experience. So, so you can kind of come in and we will show you the ropes. If you got the right attitude, if you're coachable, you'll hopefully kind of come out the same way that this first year student did, where she won arguably the most important decider match in, in bringing home our, our banner this year. So again, long, long answer to a short question for us as the badminton program all comes down to, to attitude. Attitude paired with a little bit of experience, but for the most part, it all comes down to attitude and coachability. Wonderful. Um, well, thank you all for, for joining us here this evening. Um, Neil, is there any final words you'd like to say before we, we sign off? Uh, thank you to our panelists and thank you to the people who have, uh, uh, have taken time out of their nights to find out about us. And we'd love to hear from you. Uh, at any time, uh, you, you can contact us. You can, certainly the registrar's office can point you in the right, right direction. One thing that I want to leave you with, too, there were a few things we didn't get to talk about. A couple of them were bragging about our successes, but uh, just don't forget as well, if you're a student athlete, uh, we do offer you free tutoring. So if you lose your way a bit, uh, the tutoring service is there and... Uh, we appreciate uh, uh, we'd appreciate you taking advantage of it so that you can get yourself back on track. So anyway, just wanted to make sure that you uh, that you uh, knew that that was available. Thank you so much, Neil. So yes, thanks again to all the panelists um, for taking some time out of their evening to uh, talk to us about being a blue devil. And thank you all for 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 attending as well. We'll uh, we'll send you the recording um, tomorrow. And if you have any further questions, um, you can contact uh, Neil. His, his email is on the website about athletics. You can talk, contact the registrar's office about admissions. So have a great evening, everybody. And um, hopefully we'll see you on campus in the fall. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Josh. Thank you for everything. Okay, thanks, everyone. Bye.